In today's video, we are going to share everything you need to know about how to build a community in school. We'll go through a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to get your community up and running. School is a great option to host that community because it's super easy to use. You can get your community up very quickly. And right now they're offering a 14 day free trial. So this is really at no risk to you. You can try it out for two weeks to see if you like it. So we'll leave that link down below in the description to school. Go ahead and click that and we will walk through this step-by-step. -step. So once you've clicked on that link down below, it should bring you to this homepage page here. And as you'll see, it'll ask you to enter your group name. So let's go ahead and enter that now. Then it's going to ask for your credit card information. It's going to charge you after 14 days. Like we said, there's a two week free trial, but after that, it'll charge you $99 per month. So once you've entered your credit card information here, you can go ahead and click start free trial. Now, once you're in, it'll bring you to this profile page. Go ahead and add a picture of yourself and your bio. Once you finish your profile, go ahead and click complete. Now that we're in here, you'll see that there's a couple different tabs here at the top. There's community, classroom, calendars, members, leaderboards and about. We're going to go through these one by one and let's start with community. So once you've clicked on that community tab, you'll see on the right hand side here, this is the first community that we have. Now it named it the name that I put in at the beginning when I signed up. You'll want to click upload cover photo and you can go into the settings here. So once you've clicked that, it'll bring up all the settings for this community. Here I can upload a cover photo and an icon. I can also add a group description and the initials of the group as well as a color to go along with it. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now that I've added all that information in here, once you scroll to the bottom, you can see that you can either make this group public or private. Now, depending on what you want, whether this is going to be a paid community or a public one, you can choose what is best for your situation. Just make sure that when you're done with this, go ahead and click update settings. Now that we've finished all the general information here, let's go up to the dashboard and check this out. The dashboard will show you two really important metrics. The first one is the amount of paid members in this community. And the second one is the monthly recurring revenue. So right now we just started this community. We don't have any paid members or any recurring revenue but once you do, this will populate. After that, let's go down and check out subscriptions. Now that you're here at subscriptions, you'll see that currently one member is free. That's the current price. Let's add a price to that. Now, when you click this button, add price, it's going to prompt you to give your bank account information. Now, the reason we're doing this is because once there are paid members in the community, school is going to send payment via Stripe to your bank account. So you're going to want to make sure to set this up. I'm going to set this up right now. So let's go ahead and connect my bank. I'm in the United States. Next, it's going to ask me for my email. I'll go ahead and put that in information in here, then go ahead and click continue. Next, it'll send you an email confirmation or a phone message confirmation. Then it'll ask you about your business. So are you an individual, a company or a nonprofit right now? Let's just choose individual. Go ahead and put in your legal information here and the name of your website. If you have one, go ahead and click continue when you're finished with that. Next, it gives you the option to connect with a couple different banks here. Mine is Chase. So I'll just select that one, but go ahead and choose yours. So now it's connecting my bank account with Stripe here. We can go ahead and click next. I'm going to choose the specific account that I want, and then it'll ask you to review and connect and you can go ahead and connect. Next, it'll ask you to save your account with link on Stripe. Go ahead and click this button here. And now we're all connected. Go ahead and press done. Once you're finished with that, go ahead and click continue here. Now it will ask you to review your account details. Go ahead and do that and then click agree and submit. And after that, your setup process is complete and you're able to add a price to your community. So go ahead and click add price. So let's say for this community, we're just gonna charge something like $10 a month. Go ahead and click add. And now you'll see with this green current price box that the current price is $10 per month for our community. Okay, after that, let's go down to categories here. So this is really for discussion categories. Now really, there's a couple different types of categories that you would want to include. Maybe one of them is an announcements page where just you or other admin are able to talk. And maybe the other one is a discussion forum where the people in your community can talk to each other. So let's add some of these categories right now. Go ahead and click add category at the top right hand corner here. And we'll go ahead and make this one announcements. Go ahead and put a description for this. I'm just going to say something like this is for announcements only. Next at the bottom here is really important this says permissions. So right now anyone can post and anyone can view. You want to change this to admins only can post because this is going to be an announcements category. So once that's done, you can click add. So now you'll see that there's a general discussion category that came with the community and this one that I created for announcements. Let's take a look and edit the general discussion one. So this is more of a general forum. This says general discussion and it says discuss anything here and the permissions are that anyone can post. This looks good. Let's go ahead and get out of there. Depending on what type of category you want to create for your specific community, you can go ahead and do that here. The process is super simple. Just make sure to change those permissions to allow the right people to comment 
comment in those discussion categories. Next, let's go ahead and go to the tab that says plugins. So there's four plugins here. The first one is membership questions. This is a really neat plugin. Let's go ahead and turn this on and go to edit. So let's click this on here and you can see that this button will turn green. And if you see here, it says ask members up to three questions when they join the group. Now only admin and moderators will see the answers to these questions. So let's go ahead and add some questions that you might want to ask to your incoming community members. Click up here in the top right hand corner, add question. So the first question that I could think of is how did you find this community? That's a question that I might want to know to incoming members. So let's type that one out. And you can either give them a text box answer, a multiple choice, or an email address. I'll show you how to use email address here in a second. So let's add that first question here. That one looks good. So we can add up to three. Let's add another one too, and I'll show you how to use that email address. So this one would just be something like, please share your email address. This will make sure that everybody that enters your community is going to give you your email address so you can get in contact with them. So these are two powerful questions that you might want to ask your community members when they join, just in order to get more information from them. You can go ahead and play around with this and choose your own questions. Let's go back to the plugins to see what else there is. So there's this Zapier integration for your CRM if you want to use that. That one's a little bit more involved. We won't talk too much about that one. You could also send out links to your members where they're invited with one click using Webhook. Check those out if you're interested. We won't go into too much detail here. And the last one that's really neat is the auto DM new members. Let's go ahead and click edit on this one. This is a really neat feature and a nice touch to new members in your community. You can go ahead and write them a nice message like, hey, thank you so much for joining our community. We're really excited to have you here. And what's really neat about this is that you can actually personalize the message with their name by just using these instructions here at the bottom. Just be sure to turn this on in the top right hand corner if you want to use this. This one's really powerful and it can really create a solid community with new members that are joining. Okay, that's all for the plugins. Let's go ahead and go to gamification. This is actually a really neat incentive that school offers for members of your community. So they can attain different levels of membership based on their involvement in the community. This can really help you drive engagement in your community by setting different metrics for achievement. Go ahead and play around with that yourself. We won't go into too much detail here. You can go ahead and edit these and change what each person gets at the certain level that they achieve. Just to cover a couple of the categories that we missed, go up here to payouts and you'll see the balance here and when it will be paid out. You can also invite friends on the invite tab. Just copy this link here. If you wanna see some metrics, go down to the metrics. You can see active members, total members, and a bunch of other daily activity metrics. Go ahead and go down to links here as well. You can share important resources with your members. So you can go ahead and add a link here let's say you want to link your social media or your YouTube channel, you can go ahead and put the label on here and then put the URL down here. Go down to the privacy tab here and then based on who you want to see this information, whether you want it available to the public or only people inside the group, you can change that here. And then you can go ahead and go to billing and referrals here at the bottom. This is your information for your account. So you can see that my 14 day trial ends on February 23rd and then this is my referral link again here. Okay, now let's go into the classroom tab. That's all of the community tab and we have our full community set up here. Let's Let's go check out what else school has to offer. Now that we're in the classroom tab, go ahead and click on new course here. So let's create a new course for our community. So go ahead and create a title and description like I have here, and then you can go to who can access this course. Now this is really neat because if you say members of a certain level, that goes back to the gamification tab in the settings of your community. So let's go ahead and click the access starts at level. You can go all the way up to nine, which would be the hardest to achieve. Let's go ahead and upload a cover photo here as well. And once you've done that, go ahead and click add. So now that you have a course, you'll see that this new box pops up for a new module. Go ahead and click on the edit tab over here on the right hand side. And this is where you can add a video. Now what's neat about this is that you can add a video that you can have unlisted on your YouTube channel so that people on your YouTube channel won't see it, but that people in your course can. The reason is that they will have the link and it won't be public on your YouTube. So that's a really neat feature. And depending on how long you want this course to be, you can create a bunch of different modules within the course. Okay, now that we've added one module, you can add a couple more modules within this course to develop a robust course. Let's go on to calendar now. So if you click on the calendar tab in the top bar here, you can go ahead and see a calendar for the month. So let's say we wanted to create a recurring meeting. We'll go up here to the right hand side and click on the plus sign. Now we can title this event and we can have it recurring if we like. We can have it every Friday and you can set it to end on a certain date if you like and also include a Zoom link. Then go ahead and put that description down there and a cover photo. 
And again, you can also add which members can access this call. So you can either do all members, members of a certain level status like we talked about earlier, or members in a specific course that you have created. Also a neat feature is you can click on this button here to send a reminder email one day before the meeting. So this is a really neat and powerful tool for scheduling meetings. Next, go ahead and go up to the members tab here. And you'll see that I'm the only member in the community right now and that I'm online now and the date I joined. Here are some other permissions on the right hand side that you can see as well. And if you want to invite other members, there's a button here at the top that you can do that too. And it just brings you back to the invite page within the settings of your community. Next, let's check out the leaderboards here. So once you have members in your community and you've set certain levels of gamification, you can see the different levels and members here. So right now I'm the only member and I'm at level one. But once you have more members and create different incentives, obviously there'll be members at all different levels of this gamification chart. And lastly, let's go over to this about tab. So this about tab will show you more information about your community. You'll see that it's a private group here. There's one member, myself. It's a $10 monthly subscription fee and that I was the creator of it. You can add a description here and then upload images and videos here. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you is how to create new community. So if you want to create a new community, you need to click on this button here in the top left hand corner. Click on this up and down arrow button and then it'll pop up where you can create a new community. It's a little confusing to find so I wanted to include that in here. So that's everything you need to know about how to create a community in school. As you can see, school is a super easy platform to use. It's so intuitive and it's going to be great for hosting your communities. We'll leave a link in the description down below. Go ahead and click that and just know that we get a small referral fee from that at no additional cost to you. This really helps out the channel and allows us to keep creating free content and videos like this one. So thank you so much in advance. This channel is dedicated to providing entrepreneurs and business owners like yourself with free tutorials and videos like this one. So if you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and subscribe to see future videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching. We are rooting for you and we will see you in the next one.